In today's lesson, we're going to look at chapter one, versus Earth. We're going to look at earthquakes. And we're going to look at a case study for an earthquake, which you need to know. If you would like some more of my videos, please check out my website, examrevision.ie. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash forward slash exam revision. Follow us on Twitter or Instagram for all our, all our latest updates and tips. Okay, so the very first thing um, we're going to look at is this area here. In this area here, you need to know, it's called the Pacific Ring of Fire, okay? And it's called the Pacific Ring of Fire because it's the Pacific Ocean. And along here, you have the most amount of earthquakes, volcanoes, and tectonic activity. 90% of all tectonic activity takes place around the Pacific Ring of Fire. And that's because you have quite a lot of destructive plate boundaries. You've got the Australian plate, which is crashing into Pacific plate. You've got the American plate, North American plate, crashing into Pacific plate. You've got a conservative plate here, where the plates are actually sliding past each other at the San Andreas Fault. And then you've got the Nazca plate, which is uh, destructive, crashing against the South American plate. Down here, you've got a constructive plate between the Antarctica plate and the Pacific plate, which are actually pulling apart from each other. So there's quite a lot of different, you've got the three different types of plate boundaries, and this is why 90% of all tectonic activity takes place in the Pacific Ring of Fire. So first of all, we're going to look at earthquakes. And earthquakes happen at destructive plate boundaries, when the plates are crashing against each other and one is subducting under the other plate or along conservative or transformed plate boundaries. This is when the two plates are rubbing side by side and might be, or they could be moving in a, di a different direction. And the most famous one is the San Andreas Fault. So, like I said, you can add a transform or conservative plate boundary. The plates can actually be moving in opposite direction and you get a big build up of pressure along this area here. But the plates can also be moving in actually the same direction, but one plate will be moving faster than the other plate. So, at a conservative plate boundary, there's going to be a big build-up of pressure along this area here. And when the plates actually slip, or move past, when they're moving past each other, sometimes the build-up of pressure that is built up and when the plates slip will cause an earthquake to happen. There are a few things you need to know for your junior certificate examination, um, and these are the focus. The focus is the place within the crust where the Earth's earthquake actually happens, occurs. Then you have the epicenter. So the epicenter is directly above the focus, and the epicenter is the point on the surface above the focus. The next one you need to know is seismic waves. Okay. And the seismic waves are the waves that are actually sent out, the tremors that are sent out from the earthquake itself. And the last one, it's not actually on it, but it's called, this line here is called the fault line. And the fault line is the thin zone of crust that actually separates the two uh, Earth's crusts. So it's actually where the, where, the, where, the, where the plates are separated and actually slip. So I've just made a, little, a small little list of four things that you must know for your exam. So the focus, seismic waves, or tremors, the fault, and the epicenter. When an earthquake happens, it releases these seismic waves. And these seismic waves are recorded on the seismograph. And the Richter scale records the size of the shock waves. If an earthquake happens out in the ocean, sometimes if it's the large enough, it will produce a, a thing called a tsunami. And a tsunami is when wave water is displaced because of a huge earthquake, and this causes a gigantic wave to be created, and sometimes it might reach the coastline, which can cause devastating effects, like in Southeast Asia in 2004. So we're going to look at a case study for earthquakes, and the case study we're going to look at is Japan 2011. So the first thing you need to know is you need to know some background information. So Japan had a massive earthquake, which reached 9.1 on, uh, on the Richter scale, and it happened on the 11th of March 2011, at quarter to six in the morning. 
the earthquake happened just off the coast of Japan. It was 130 kilometers off the east coast of Japan. And because it was such a huge earthquake in the ocean, this created a tsunami and sent a tsunami towards Japan. And the last background information fact I'm going to give you is it lasts for six minutes. So what was the cause of this huge earthquake which then led to the tsunami? Well, one of the causes that Japan is located on the east edge of the Eurasian plate. The oceanic plate is subducting under the Eurasian plate. So it's like a destructive plate boundary. And this is when two plates crash against each other. And the last cause is that Japan lies in the Pacific Ring of Fire. The next thing you need to know is some of the impacts and effects that this earthquake, which then led to a tsunami, had on Japan. The death toll, there was over 15,000 deaths and almost 6,000 people were injured. Over half a million people were left homeless. Nearly 5,000 homes were destroyed completely and over 50,000 homes were actually damaged. 582 roads were cut off and 32 bridges were destroyed. And finally, the overall estimated cost was said to be over 150 billion euro. So finally, the last thing you need to know is you need to know about the response and how well Japan actually managed the natural disaster. So the first thing, Japan is very, very well equipped for earthquakes. And they're very well prepared with they have um, earthquake proof roads and buildings. But they didn't expect such huge tsunami. But they still did deal quite well with uh, their response and their management of the situation. A tsunami, um, the tsunami, the tsunami warning was issued three minutes after the earthquake. There was also a text message sent to all mobile phones as well as TV uh, urging those people uh, to try to escape and go to higher grounds. 91 countries offered aid from blankets and food to search dogs and military transport. Several charities uh, helped out, including Save the Children UK, British Red Cross, World Vision, 59 search and rescue experts, four medics, two sniffer dogs flew on a private charter plane with 11 tons of equipment on board. So all in all, Japan did deal with the natural disaster very effectively, but they just weren't expecting the huge size and power of the tsunami. So that's it for this case study. You should know some of the background information, some of the causes, some of the impacts, and some of the response and management to the earthquake of Japan 2011. So that brings us to the end of today's tutorial on Restless Earth and looking at earthquakes. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and, and learned lots from it. If you did enjoy it or you did learn something, could I'd love to hear from you. Could you please leave me some feedback um, on the YouTube channel or you can leave it on Twitter or Instagram or however you want to. If there's something that you're not sure about, please, please write it into the comments uh, below and I'll, ha I'll happily uh, answer your questions. Or maybe other people that are watching the video might answer the question to help you.